probably better to post this on Friday, but this is America Day, and this is the history of the US flag. When the American Revolution started, you can see this flag. Its name is the Continental Colors flag, or is it also called the Grand Union flag. It's fairly similar to the current US flag. You have 13 red and white stripes symbolizing the 13 original colonies. Now the only difference from the flag is the Union Jack in the Canton. Now I kind of like this flag. If we didn't have our current flag, we can probably be uh, one of the other Commonwealth countries and territories. From research, the early use of this comes from Philadelphia seamstress Margaret Manny's first sewn the continental colored flag. Then, on December of 1775, the flag was flown on the f fighting vessels. After a year, the flag was seen as an official naval flag. Then, on January 1st, 1776, George Washington ordered that the flag was put on Prospect Hill in Somersville, Massachusetts. The designer of the flag is unknown, but it's theorized that Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Lynch, and Benjamin Harrison should be responsible. The next flag we're going to look at is the Betsy Ross flag. This would be the first official flag of the United States, adopted by the Continental Congress on June 14, 1777. We'll get to this date later. This flag has 13 continuous red and white stripes. In the canton, there is a blue field with 13 five-pointed stars making a circle. I'm sure we all know what the 13 stars and stripes mean. Now yes, this flag is called the Bester Ross flag, but there is no evidence that Bester Ross designed or sewn this flag. After this flag, you can see this flag. This is when two states entered the US. Vermont, check out the last, my last video, in 1791, and Kentucky in 1792. Around this time, the flag started seeing some problems. As Vermont and Kentucky were admitted to the United States, the flag would add some stars and stripes. It doesn't seem wrong to do this, right? Well, as Tennessee, Ohio, Louisiana, Indiana, and Mississippi were admitted, that would mean five more stripes. And if we keep adding stripes, that would be a little much. To solve this problem, the U.S. passed the Flag Act of 1818, which pretty much says that they will put the stripes at 13 for the 13 original colonies, and they will add a new star for each new U.S. state. This will uh, continue for several years. By 1861, the flag will reach 34 stars. Do you know what else happened in 1861? That's right, the U.S. Civil War. The U.S. flag will keep all the stars of the states that left the United States. Since we're on the topic of the Civil War, this is the flag of the Confederate States, also known as the Stars and Bars. I know we know that this is the Stars and Bars, which we all beloved, but this is not actual uh, called the Stars and Bars. The bars are the three red and white stripes, and the stars are located in the can in the blue canton. Much like the Union flag, the Confederate flag keeps adding the stars of each state that joins the CSA. After the war and the CSA was dissolved, the U.S. added more stars to the canton. In 1959, the last the state to enter the United States was Hawaii, which made the flag the current 50 star flag. Now, this is the end of this episode of uh, History of. If you have any other ideas of this new series, let me know in the comments and happy 4th of July.